Okay. This is an interview at the Division of Military Naval Affairs Headquarters, Latham, New York, 29th of December, 2003, approximately 9.15 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Norman Alfred Malcolmson. Uh, place of birth is uh, Mineola, Long Island, New York, 1921. Okay. October. Um, do you remember where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah, I believe I, I wasn't in the Navy yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Roxbury, New York. That's where I used to live. Do you remember what your reaction was when you heard about that? Uh, of course, everybody was upset. Some, some people couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. What was your educational background prior to entering service? High school. Okay. Um, when, when did you go into service? 42, 1942. All right. Were you drafted or did you enlist? No, I enlisted. Why did you select the Navy? <laughs> that's, that's a leading question. <laughs> no, I, I was been wanted to go in the Navy for a long time. Um, my father made me be a good boy if I didn't. They wouldn't let me go in the Navy. So. Were you, had you ever been on ships before? Or no, no. I, my father had a book of knowledge, a string of books, mm -hmm. and they all had pictures of uh, Navy ships, the Great White Fleet. Oh, yeah. That's back in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I like to see them floating along with a big, wake behind him and everything like that. That was nice, nice mm -hmm. to see that. Okay. Um, where did you go for your basic training? Newport, Rhode Island, in the Quonset Point, they called it. Mm -hmm. We were in the Quonset huts area. We didn't have barracks. And uh, it was just sort of like a dust bowl. And I had a real tough uh, Navy chief. It was our commander at the time. And he really made you toe the mark. And you held up your rifle in a rifle drill. He made you try to remember the numbers on it. I remember that. Now, did you have uh, beds to sleep in, or did you have hammocks? We had cots. Cots? But you had to, that's when we got issued all our clothing and everything. And we had to roll up everything so that your name was plainly visible. Mm -hmm. And they had clothes stops. You tie it on each end, so the, the, the name was visible, and it, it, it stowed easy in, in a sea bag. Mm -hmm. How long were you uh, at uh, Newport? Uh, six to eight weeks, I think mm -hmm. it was. And from there I went to a uh, machinist mate school in Boston, in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And I think I was there probably three, four months and then I got shipped out. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have classes in the hotel? No, a class, that was just more like the barracks. Okay. It was a hotel, the name skips me right mm -hmm. now, but we had to walk from, we had to march actually from there over to the school, over near uh, the Red Sox, you know, it was, a, it was an engineering school. And we had classes over at that school. But in the barracks there, usually we just just livable and we ate there too. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of uh, training were you given? What kind of specialized training? On machinery. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd never seen a lathe before in my life, and we had to go in a machine shop and work a lathe. And needless to say, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but we had pumps, uh, all sorts of engineering things. It was, Pumps, steam, uh, hydraulics, just about a general sense of machinist mate. Mm -hmm. Now when you went, finally were assigned to a ship, do you think your training was sufficient or did you learn on the job also? Well, before I joined the Navy, I was into waterworks. My father owned a oh, waterworks okay. uh -huh. thing. And I had known a lot about plumbing and this and that, and most, mostly that. But uh, I was familiar with a lot of things, piping. And, mm -hmm. But as far as uh, steam machinery, I had no, no knowledge of that at all. 
and it, I was in a learn, learning mode just about all the time. Okay, um, where did you go after Boston? Uh, I went down to, to New York City to the Navy Yard, and I was assigned to for further duty to uh, the USS Hillary P. Jones, DD-427 destroyer, mm -hmm. and they had just come in from the North Atlantic, and while on that trip they had just picked up survivors from the Reuben James. Oh, really? Yes, and that was, huh. that was the first ship that had gotten sunk. So in other reuni in reunions that we've had with the Jones after that, some of the survivors came to several of the reunions. So we, we had quite a bond between Reuben James and the, uh, and the Jones. Okay, um, how old was the James? Was it an older destroyer or? Mm. Remember at all? I, I, I never had anything to do with. Just met some of the crew members. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long were you on the Reuben James? I was. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the Jones. Uh, I said the James, the Jones. I was on there for two years. Uh, dates are skipping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Was that an older destroyer, or was it? A no, it was a fairly new one. Was it? Yeah. Went in commission, I believe, in forty. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, duties did the Jones perform? In the oh, the Jones was in uh, convoy duty. That's mm -hmm. the main thing when I went on there. And uh, do you remember some of the convoys and some? Of, do you have any stories about some of the? Yeah, one convoy we came. Was, we had a slow convoy. It was it was uh, English. Tanker, I think it was. We usually handled tankers because mm -hmm. they needed the fuel uh, down in Guantanamo Bay. And uh, this one time, the ship couldn't keep up with the convoy, so we were assigned to follow, circle around them, and protect them. And they did get hit, and it was still afloat when we picked up survivors from them. And they were on our ship. So. Was hit by a German submarine? Or? Submarine, yes. Uh -huh. That was all submarines long into mm -hmm. there when we were there. The submarine fact was a big factor in going through, uh, approaching to the Mediterranean, in, in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, on the Lansdale, there was there were submarines around, but the Lansdale was sunk by aerial torpedoes. Now, were you on the Lansdale? I was on the Lansdale. Uh, Matter of fact, in between all this time, I had gotten to I had to go to the hospital on one of the return trips to New York, and I had an operation. And then I got on a uh, a troop ship headed back to the Mediterranean for further transfer back to the Jones. She was over there in combat duty at that time. And uh, uh, I'm losing my train of thought yeah. here. <laughs> so when you went on uh, by troop ship. Oh, OK. I went to Oran, Africa. Mm -hmm. And I was shipped up to a, 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 out in the boondocks, actually. It was a receiving station. And I was there oh, maybe a week. And the, the Jones hadn't come into port, but the Lansdale did come in. And I was shipped down to the Lansdale because they, mm -hmm. they needed uh, crew members down there. Now, I noticed the Jones and the Lansdale were consecutive numbers. Were they sister ships? Or yes, the Jones and, and the Lansdale were both from a division, uh, starting with the Madison which was 425, and the Lansdale 426, Jones 427, and the other the last ship, which we saw, we did not break with it, was the Hughes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would operate as a division, actually. Mm -hmm. so. 
And one of the important things I remember is when I first went on to Jones, the skipper that was on there was a commander. And he was a real likable guy, tall, sturdy. Mm -hmm. And he had a, it was like a, he was being transferred. He was going up the line. I guess he made captain. Do you remember his name? Yes, uh, Ellis, mm -hmm. Robert B. Ellis. Mm -hmm. He's since passed away. Mm -hmm. But after I uh, left the Joan, after I was out of the Navy, I understood him that he had uh, become commandant of the Naval Academy. You know, uh, when you went out to Lansdale, were you given the same assignments and so on? Yes, I was. Uh, I was in the after engine room mm -hmm. on a lower level on pumps. They had uh, electric and steam pumps there, and I was on the pumps. Now, did you find in the two ships that uh, there were, were there a lot of problems with the engines, or were they pretty well no, problem-free? No, sir. They, uh, the crew people that were on there when I went on there, on both the Jones and there were guys that had either been in the Navy, much longer than me anyway, mm -hmm. and they were tried and true crew members. I mean, they were rated and they were chiefs and first class and second class machinist mates that really knew their job and had been working with it, that kind of machinery. Mm -hmm. It was new to me, but, and they were all very good, I'll tell you that. They, they were tip top machinists and engineers. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about uh, what happened to the Lansdale? As near as I can tell you, I was I was down in the after engine room mm -hmm. uh, on the lower level, and that was the scary part because it, uh, we had dropped. Uh, they had also had uh, submarine attacks that same night. We were at, luckily we were at Sunset GQ, which was we went to general quarters at sunset every night. I was only on there seven days, so I didn't get to know too many of the crew until after. But the uh, main thing was it took a couple of hits from this German uh, aircraft. And what had usually happened, the French came over and would give their recognition and they would allow them to pass over the whole convoy, you know, to recognize them. But uh, the Germans, were on to the fact that they were doing that, so they snuck in behind, and it was two planes that came over, and they shot down the one. There were, uh, now, you were in the Mediterranean when this happened? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They came over from Africa uh -huh. toward us. What do you remember when you were hit? Uh, I remember I was the only one down there, because they had called up the the fellow that was down there with me, they had called him up for duty up on the, on the main deck, but they, the ship was starting to list. Mm -hmm. Did you feel a torpedo hit? All I know is a, a big loud bang, and, and that's all I know, but I didn't mm -hmm. know if the sh ship had gotten hit mm -hmm. or if we had dropped depth charges. Because the depth charges and that ship getting hit mm -hmm. like that sounded very nearly like the same. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I could tell was, I know the screw shaft from the forward engine room go, when it goes through the after engine room before it goes out of the hull. I kept my eye on that screw, and the screw was still turned, so I knew we were still operating. Anyway, they called me up. The chief was down there, and I think the engineering officer didn't want to let anybody go. But they had received word to ban the ship, and I didn't know it. And they were telling me, come on up, come on up, come on up. So I went up on the next level, and everybody was trying to get up to the, the ladder to get out of there. And by that time, the ship was really taking a list. And I had trouble getting up the ladder to, to get out of the, the hole up on the top. Mm -hmm. When I did, I made sure I blew up my, I had a rubber life ring. Mm -hmm. that you had to blow up. I didn't have a May West. A lot of people had May West, but I like this blow up thing. Well, that came up like this. Mm -hmm. 
and I had to climb. Why did you like that more than the May West? I, I seemed to hold my head up better. Uh huh. It seemed to anyway. But well, you had to blow it up by a hose. Yeah. Well, some of them had these little gas vials mm -hmm. that you just put that in there and it expanded like that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you wore it like a belt because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be anywhere near as cumbersome as a as a life jacket, you know. Mm -hmm. Light jackets around your neck if you tie right. it up and everything. Anyway, this helped my arms up and it seemed to be better for me. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to blow something like that up? Oh, instant, instantly. Uh -huh. well, I got out on the main deck and the ship was listing further all the time. It listed to port. And I'm talking about, I'm back in the engine room and I'm on the starboard side and the ship is like this. So I climbed over the rail and Everybody said, get away from the ship, because when she, if she goes down, which they didn't know at that time it would, but they were, everybody was abandoning ship. Uh -huh. And uh, Were there fires too, or did you? Uh, I didn't see any, <coughs> okay. but I, all I know is that my thing, my recollection after I got in the water was steam, because of the, it got hit between uh -huh. the forward engine room and the forward fire room. So that knocked out the, that part of it. But somehow, as I, I know before I went up, up to the next level, the shaft was still turned from, from there, from the forward, fire, uh, forward engine room. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened to me is after I climbed up over the top wire, the ship was still listing. I slid down, and on the ship from, oh, sorry, up in the area of the forward engine room, there's a state, what they call stabilizers. It runs the length of the ship. It's oh, maybe like this mm -hmm. wide. All the whole length of the ship, and it's a stabilizer. It keeps it from rocking back and mm -hmm. forth. Well, when I hit the water, I remember, I don't know, I remember water flying by me, and next thing I know, boom, I hit that stabilizer. And, uh, Really, I, from there, I don't remember too much, except I got up the top side, up in the top of the water, and, and there was a, there was a, floaters were around. The guys had floated, they were collecting around there. <laughs> and uh, I got in with one or two of them, and I helped one guy with his Mae West that was, wasn't on particularly good for him, because he was flopping around. And he was afraid he was going to sink. And uh, uh, we didn't know how long we were going to be there. Actually, it wasn't as long as you would think, you know. It seemed longer, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was supposed to, it was, uh, from what I understand, it was, we were in the water maybe an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And searchlights started to fly then around. And it turned out there were other ships in our convoy. They were uh, Coast Guard ships. And one, the new and the holder, and the new and the holder is the only two I remember. They took on, they had the search sites and they were scanning the water, looking for, for us in the water. And uh, I'm not sure right now if I, Rich, Rich was another one, I think. I'm not sure if, which ship I got on, because mm -hmm. they hauled me up. The, they had uh, the, the ladders, rope ladders, you know, down the side mm -hmm. for anybody that came up and wasn't picked up by a, a lifeboat. And I was climbing up the rope ladder, and next thing I know, I'm hauled up on there. The guys, the, the people up on the ship were hauling us up, you know, trying to get us mm -hmm. out of there. So somebody else could come up too, you know. You know that's the main thing I remember. And we, everybody had oil and stuff all over them. Were you able to shower and, and clean up? Uh, they, oh yeah. Were able to do that? yeah, they gave us all the clothes they had, mm -hmm. and uh, well, of course they had supplies on there anyway. But the, one of the funny things about it was that. Uh, one of the reunions we had after it, uh, I had with the Jones, the Lansdale uh, 
crew, one of the reunions, uh, one of the officers from the new, I guess, or the holder said, they ran out of liquor. <laughs> Um, how long was it before you were assigned to another ship? Oh, well, it was quite a while because uh, we, everybody had 30 days leave, mm -hmm. survivor leave, they call mm -hmm. it. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, on the executive officer, as the lands there was uh, Mr. Robert Morgenthau, who was, before he went to the Navy, he was a uh, assistant, well, he was a district attorney of uh, Manhattan district attorney of New York City. Mm -hmm. And his father, at the time, was President Roosevelt's secretary of the treasury. You may have heard oh, of him. Okay, yes. You remember of him. Hen mm -hmm. Henry Morgenthau Morgan was his father's yes. name. And uh, he was quite instrumental in getting everybody leave and everybody uh, had needed anything, he would took care of that. Uh -huh. And the skipper of the Lansdale went to desert duty in Washington, but I, I have no idea why, but he didn't last very long. He passed away. Huh. I don't know if he had some kind of guilty thoughts. I don't know why he would, but uh, matter of fact, Two of us went to Washington, and we did get to see him when he was in Washington. But uh, he was a young man, lieutenant commander. How long was it before you were signed up to the destroyer Rooks? Rooks, yes. Uh, well, after the 30 days leave, mm -hmm. I had to report to uh, Annapolis, Maryland for duty down air. And that was like cream job. <laughs> uh, there were small craft down there that they used to train midshipmen with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was down there well, over a year, anyway, maybe two years. And then I, after a while, you get to, the sea duty was was beckoning, <laughs> and we couldn't couldn't. Uh, couldn't wait to get off the base uh -huh. because it was all the restrictions there in the academy. It's very, you know, uptight and everything. And uh, not that I, it wasn't bad, but we could used to do our laundry down on the YP dock, which is uh, where all the small craft were. And uh, we had gone, the main reason we went to go see the, the Captain Swift was to see if we couldn't get back on a ship like new construction or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they waited and waited and waited to hear from something. Nothing ever happened. Finally, I, uh, I did get transferred to uh, the West Coast. Uh, I had been home on leave and I came back and I found my transfer when I got back to Annapolis. So I had a crew of guys with me that I took out to the West Coast. We went on a train, and that was a long trip, cross country on the train. Now, when was this? It was after I had been down to Annapolis for mm -hmm. a year or well, so. Well, about what year and month do you mm -hmm. call that? Man. Okay, that, that's okay if you don't tell <laughs> me. Uh, had the war in the, uh, Europe ended by then, or was it still going on? No, in? while I was down in Annapolis, the war in Europe ended. Mm -hmm. so How did I, you hear that news? Over radio. Mm -hmm. I, what was the reaction? I was quite surprised mm -hmm. and glad. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Where were you when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Were you there also? In Annapolis, yes. Mm -hmm. What were, were your feelings when you heard that? Well, we had almost just... See, the ships, some of the big ships come in. They don't come all the way into Annapolis. Mm -hmm. But then they take crews out on the ships. Well, the big, I think it was, a, if I'm not mistaken, it was a New York came in. And it was either Roosevelt or Truman was on there. So, and we took, that's as close as I've ever been to a 
to a big ship like that, mm -hmm. and here we are, it's eight, 12 inches of armor plate, and we're tied up next to it. And man, it's, it's unbelievable. So, uh, but I can't tell exactly what year it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you went out to the Pacific, were you assigned to a, a ship out there? Yes, that's where I was. Uh, as we took the train out to the West Coast, <coughs> we went to, uh, we reported to San Diego, mm -hmm. and the Rooks was the ship we were going to, DD-804, and we had to do, it was in, had been in mothballs out there all this time, and what we were doing, it was a program that the Navy had started back up again, rehabbing the ships that had been in mothballs because they needed it, because they I suppose they figured the Korean War was coming up or something. But this was after World War II ended? Yes. Okay. So the, the war in the Pacific ended while you were on your way out to the West Coast? No, it was after. After? After, after yeah. How did you feel when you heard about the dropping the atomic bombs? Oh. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've read up on it since, a lot of it. And I, mm -hmm. Some of the ships that were at Pearl Harbor that uh, really got beat up, like I know that I read about uh, battleship uh, Washington was sunk right there in its moorings mm -hmm. with that Japanese attack, and it's been rehab. They they towed it all the way. They fixed it so it, they refloated it, mm -hmm. and they towed it all the way into San Francisco when she got back in the war again, which I think was amazing. Mm -hmm. Some of the things they did. Mm -hmm. So um, what did you do with the Rooks? Uh, this, was in, this was about the time the Korean War was starting, or? About that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you said you were discharged in 48, uh -huh. and then you were called back in for Korea. Yes, yes. That's when I went on another ship, the Damato. I put another ship in commission, the uh -huh. Damato. Uh -huh. um, where did you serve on the Damato? In the engine room. Uh, well, in the oh, Pacific, did uh, you ever go to Korea or off the coast of Korea? Then? Negative, or? negative. No. Now, you said you were a, a, a plank uh, owner on the D'Amato. Yes. What does that mean? Plank owner? Mm -hmm. That's one that is, puts the ship in commission, and he's what they call a nucleus crew they have, too, mm -hmm. that reports to the ship to take over from the Navy Yard, in other mm -hmm. words, and get acquainted with it, and as new guys keep coming on, they teach them what you've already learned, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, was the D'Amato a uh, mothballed, or was this a new destroyer? No, this was brand new. Brand new destroyer. It had paper on the, on the, in, in, internally, the, they had sheets of paper all the way on the forward and aft on the, mm -hmm. in the deck, so that you wouldn't, get it all messed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you said uh, in the form you filled out that one of the most funny uh, experiences happened while you were on the D'Amato. You had uh, a crew member that was able to do something oh, yeah. unusual? Yeah. <laughs> He's a, he was a piece of work, that guy. He was an old water tender. Uh, I don't know if he had been in before start of World War II or not. But he was quite a character, and he was, he was a boiler technician mm -hmm. in the fire room. And he was able to, like, hey, Woody, call to somebody, you know. And if you weren't actually in the area and you heard that, you'd think somebody was around somewhere, but you don't know where they were. Oh, he was able he, to throw his voice then. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't exactly he threw his voice. Mm -hmm. if he would just cover his mouth. Uh -huh. And if I could work it a little bit, you'd know that if I was over there, you know, and you'd be uh -huh. naturally you'd look over there and nobody there. And he used to do that with the, with the uh, yard workmen. He'd have them frustrated. Okay. Um, where did you serve during the Korean War? Off the coast of the United States? The same thing that I was when, when I was on the Jones and the Lansdale uh -huh. and the Mediterranean and, oh, okay. and uh, the Atlantic. Uh -huh. Right. Mostly on mostly on training with the with the D'Amato. Mm -hmm. When did you leave service? The second time, 
53, something like that. When you, uh, after you left the service, did you join any veterans organizations? Yeah, not right away. I joined the fire company where I live mm -hmm. first. And uh, I pretty hot for a fire company then. Mm -hmm. They needed mm -hmm. people. Uh, but I, since I had joined the VFW, I tried to, I, I didn't join the American Legion, but I had been to some of their meetings. Because I have a, a Legion and a VFW in my area where I live. Uh -huh. So, but I, uh, I did join the VFW and I'm still a, I'm a life member of the post that I belong. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, one year I was the commander of the post. Did you ever make use of the GI Bill? Yes. How did you use it? I went to school, uh -huh. photography school. Uh -huh. So, and then I started my own business, which didn't last too long, in photography. Uh -huh. I did, did weddings. Uh -huh. That's the natural thing. I mean, you, you got a business now. Yeah. Did you, uh, you belong to some reunions? You, you've done some reunions? Oh, and... I went to a lot of reunions. Uh -huh. uh, the Jones, uh, I went to Jones first. And... Where the heck did the first Jones reunion I went to was out in Cincinnati, or no, St. Louis, mm -hmm. and seen guys that you hadn't seen in years, you know. And after that period, I went to several reunions almost every year. But uh, there's a different bunch of people uh, running the reunions each each time. Well, they had a different city each time, mm -hmm. and. Um, I had always wanted to go to a Jones, uh, Lansdale reunion, and nobody, this was like 50 years, and nobody had gotten one started up. Well, from all of, I got a picture of the, the fourth reunion, I, I, I hosted that for the Lansdale, and I had hosted the, the Jones reunion here in Albany too, uh -huh. once or twice. Have you stayed in contact with any of the men that you served with? Oh or? yeah, one of the guys from the Jones lives in Buffalo, and uh, I hear from him a lot, quite, mm -hmm. quite often, because he was the one that kept the Jones going to where it is now, which is getting down and down and down as far as membership goes, because people are dying off. Mm -hmm. How many attended your last reunion? Uh, Sixteen, I think it was. Mm -hmm. so that's not too many. Yeah. Are there any from, you said the Reuben James group joined you sometime? I haven't seen any of them, not since the one of them that I went to, that there was some guys there from the mm -hmm. James. Okay. Um, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? I don't know, it made me a good Navy man. I wish I had stayed in. Oh, really? Oh, definitely. Uh -huh. Okay, so you have some photographs to show us. Why don't you uh, hold them, if you hold them up in front of you like this, okay. just in front of you, Wayne yep. can focus on it. And, uh... This one here is the oldest one I've got, and that's me when I was in recruit training in Nor uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Now, how uh, old were you at that time? Oh, man. This don't ask me questions. You must have been about 20, 21 years old. No, I, I don't think I was that old, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. All okay. right. And I don't remember when I had this taken. Sometime, and I think it was in, in Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. What about that one? That's about the same, I think. Mm -hmm. Same time. Anything from when you were during the Korean War period? No. Okay. Okay, hey, this is... That's the Lansdale. 
Uh, I think that's when she was right at the shortly after she was in commission. Don't look at this here. That's a smoke. This is supposed to be smoking. <laughs> okay. Uh, Did you have any pictures of the Jones at all, or? Uh, no. no. Uh, it's the same. I got a picture similar to that, but it's it's the Jones. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, oh, okay. Is it all right to show this? Sure. sure. Uh, I think it was 1990. I hosted the Lansdale reunion here in Albany, and this is the crew members. And in the front, the very front, is Mr. Morgan, who was executive officer on there. Okay, whereabouts are you there? Me? Yeah, I'm up here. Right on the end? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, this is just everybody, the men and their wives, that's all you don't need that. Okay. All right. Thank you.